Hey, welcome back guys, JC here, and here's how you power the Omnibus flight controllers. Just a few things I need to mention before we begin. This will save me from making like six different videos. For one, I have two different ones here. This is the F3, just the regular one, and here I have the F4 Pro with the current sensor. In between these two comes the F3 Pro with the current sensor, then we have the F4 without current sensor, and then we have the F4 Pro. I'll be able to show you how to power all four of these videos with only these two. Also keep in mind that this will apply to the Omnibus fly controllers. It's called a Flip32 Omnibus, but there are even more models of the Flip32 fly controllers. But the other Flip32s do not have the built-in voltage regulator, so this video will not apply to you. This is only for Omnibus users. Also, I'll be leaving links to my Omnibus playlist Check that playlist out for many other helpful videos. I'm making a complete series. Um, link is in the top right of your screen and description below. Next thing I need to cover, ESCs. You have linear ESCs and you have opto ESCs. You guys with the linear ESCs, if you don't know, you can spot a linear ESC because it will have three of these wires, the small wires coming out of it. Yellow or white is going to be signal red is power and brown or black is ground. These ESCs receive power from your PDB which powers the ESC but they have a built-in Beck or voltage regulator uh, which will step the voltage down to 5 volts and kick it back out through the red power wire. If you have these ESCs you do not want this only applies to these fly controllers with built-in voltage regulators because what's going to happen is you're going to power these in the ways I'm going to show you in this video and then all of the 5 volt pins will be producing 5 volts. So if you add in this red power wire which is also producing 5 volts something is going to fry. So if you have linear ESCs do not use this red wire. Either cut it off or desolder it or uh, you can even use these to power 5 volt devices like a camera or video transmitter or anything. Um, so do what you want with this wire, just do not put it on this fly controller. You guys with the Opto ESCs, you have nothing to worry about because it does not have that back and that red power wire has already been removed. Okay, now how do you power these the correct way? Alright, I'm going to cover the ones that does not have the current sensor first. Doesn't matter if you have the F3 or the F4 Omnibus, if you look right here, uh, these two pins are the two pins you need to power it. This pin in the middle is going to be the power pin. This pin on the edge of the board is the ground pin. And it's they're both the third pins down. Because these fly controllers have a built-in voltage regulator, you can uh, give it the full voltage of your battery. Where most other fly controllers, you have to use an external 5-volt regulator or a linear ESC. Okay, so I've taken uh, just two pieces of wire and soldered it on here. Uh, like I said, power in the middle, ground on the outside, on the pins, uh, three pins down. Now the other end of these wires will go to your PDB and it can go anywhere on the PDB where it's getting the full voltage of the battery. Uh, meaning you can solder them directly onto your battery leads like I've done here or you can place them on your ESC main power and ground pads. Basically, the only place you don't want to place these wires are uh, like on a voltage regulator. For example, I have a 5 volt and 12 volt regulators here. Uh, you don't want to use those because if you do use those, you will only see 5 or 12 volts in your uh, beta flight, clean flight, on screen display, telemetry, so on and so on. Uh, because not only will this power the flight controller, it is also telling the flight controller how much voltage is going into it, and that is what tells it. Um, that's how you see your voltage in your telemetry and on-screen displays. That leads me to my next point. There has been some confusion as to uh, how you get voltage in the uh, beta flight telemetry on-screen displays because if you look at the wiring diagram there is another this is labeled VBAT but this is also labeled VBAT. On most other fly controllers and throughout history the VBAT pin has always been known as the pin you use to place voltage in telemetry and everything like that. And there is another VBAT pin right here on this corner. 
This VBAT pin is not what you think it is, and I will actually cover this in another video when I show you how to use these pins to power your camera and video transmitter. So don't worry about that. Just to prove it to you, if I plug in my LiPo battery, we are now powering the flight controller. If we go into uh, Betaflight, it might help if I have a USB connected. See right here, we are already getting the voltage of my battery. I have checked it with multimeter and it is accurate. Um, it currently has 15.6 volts. If it is slightly off, I do have a video showing you how to calibrate your voltage. Just look in my Betaflight playlist and that is in the, uh, the link to that is in the description below. If you are not seeing this, make sure you go to configuration, scroll down, and make sure that VBAT is turned on. Okay, so now you guys, without the current sensors, you are done with this video. Uh, and you can keep watching, but now I'm going to cover you guys with the Pro versions, whether it's the F3 or F4. Because these have built-in current sensors, all of the voltage has to go into the flight controller first, and then back out to your PDB. If you have your uh, your battery lead like this going into the PDB first, your current is not going to work. It will show voltage, but you will not have that current sensor, and that kind of defeats the whole purpose of having this flight controller. Okay, so now I have this one wired up. Keep in mind that I'm not using the correct gauge of wire. This is just for demonstration purposes only. Uh, ideally, you would want at least 14 gauge wire especially if you were using a 4S setup. I mean, if you were using a 3S setup, you might be able to get away with 16 gauge wire, um, but I would just run 14 gauge either way. So basically, let's just pretend this right here is my battery lead, and here we have the battery. Uh, you're going to run this positive wire from your XD60 connector first to the flight controller on this pad right here where it says BAT plus. Then, right here, you will run another uh, 14 gauge wire from this to the positive on your PDB. Okay, now for ground, if we look on the back side, here is the ground pad. You will run another 14 gauge wire from ground to the ground pad on the PDB and then the ground from your XT60 connector you will run from that directly to also the ground on the PDB. You, you'll see here that's why I have two different wires going to the same pad. Now here's your other option and uh, you can do this one of two ways at least with the ground. You probably just want to figure out which pad is larger to give you the most real estate for wires. If you can see here both of my pads are about the same size same width at least. But if your pad on your PDB is smaller than this pad, then what you can do is run the ground wire from the XT60 connector straight to the flight controller and then run another one from the flight controller to the PDB. And that way you will only have one ground on the PDB, two wires on the flight controller. So if I plug in my battery, we get power. If we go into beta flight, uh, once again, if you're seeing nothing right now, go to configuration, scroll down, make sure you have VBAT turned on. Okay, and there we go. Now I'm getting the voltage in uh, Betaflight, which will also relay it to my on-screen display and telemetry. And also if we turn on current, we now get a current reading. By the way, this is completely wrong. Absolutely wrong. You do have to calibrate your current and I do have a video showing you how to cur calibrate current as well. So uh, watch both of those videos on how to uh, calibrate both of these. Voltage, super easy. Current, major friggin' headache. But that video should explain everything for you. Okay, now here's my last tip. So say you get fed up with this whole current deal. Uh, either you're just tired of trying to get these wires on with, with the limited space you have, or maybe it's just uh, too many wires running everywhere between this and that. Or maybe you watch the, my current calibration video and you just say, screw that, I'm not even dealing with that. Hey, I don't blame you. So say you only want voltage in Betaflight, on-screen displays, telemetry, um, but you don't care for current anymore. You just gave up on that. Uh, well, here's the fix. You will just wire this just like I showed with this. 
which is a couple pieces of wire between the PDB, ground and positive. The power wire will run to this pad here, ground to the ground pad, and you will have nothing on the voltage out pad. So now when I plug in my LiPo battery, we still get power. Plug in the USB and go back into Betaflight, and there you go. We're still getting voltage. We just won't get current. Now it's going to show a current reading, but it it's now it's even more inaccurate because there there is no such thing. Uh, it's impossible. So don't think you are still going to get a current reading with the only these two wires. And by the way, the the gauge wire I'm using right, right now, these thin wires, uh, this is correct. You don't have to use 14 gauge wire just to get voltage in the telemetry. It's not going to mess anything up. So use small wires like this. And that will do it for this video guys. So I hope you have a better understanding of how to power your Omnibus flight controller no matter which model you have. Uh, like I said, check out the playlist that I left links to in the description below or top right of your screen. And I will see you there.